Hey everybody, Black Ninja 797 here. Welcome back to another episode of Left 4 Dead 2 Myth Busting Mondays. And in today's video for the final myth, we're going to be testing to see if whether or not that during the healing animation, while you use a med kit, will the animations that take place during you healing yourself move your hitbox around so you could dodge bullets if they were being shot your way? Or in other words, does healing with a med kit basically make it where you can dodge bullets, similar to the Matrix? I've seen plenty of viral clips over the last couple of years, usually it's with emoting, funnily enough, where people will just mess around with their hitboxes and make it where people cannot end up shooting them. So I wanted to see if we could do that in Left 4 Dead by healing with a med kit. If you guys end up enjoying today's video, please drop a like, subscribe if you are new, and if you have a myth of your very own that you would like to have us test in next week's episode, please by all means leave it here in the comments down below, or also alternatively, you can leave it within my Discord server, which is going to be linked down below in this video's description. With all that being said though guys, I hope you end up enjoying seeing this week's episode of Left 4 Dead 2 Myth Busting Mondays. Myth, can you bleed out during the outro cutscene? Waltz incapacitated on the rescue vehicle. Alrighty guys, myth number one is submitted in by How about new? This myth acts as a sequel to the final myth of the last episode, because in the last episode for the final myth, we were testing to see if whether or not that you could die during a campaign outro. Some of you guys, including How About No, were talking about how what if a player ended up bleeding out and then the cutscene happened at the very last seconds, right before they officially died. Would they die as the rescue vehicle is going away? So, that's basically what we're going to be doing here in today's video. So, I am about to fill up the Jimmy Gibbs stock car any second now with the last of the gasoline cans. Rochelle and Coach will end up being our test subjects in today's myth. And what we're going to have happen is me and Glob Ersko are going to wait till the very last possible second to hop in the bounds area for the Jimmy Gibbs stock car. And right as one of them is about to end up bleeding out with their like last three HP, we're then going to jump in, initiate the cutscene, and see what happens. So Rochelle and Coach are going to die any second now, but I will speed up the foot just a bit to make it go by a little quicker. Alright, so here we go. We're jumping into the area now. The Jimmy Gibbs stock car is officially starting up, and we're about to end up leaving the mall. So here we go. We plow through the entrance. Now let's take a look at the credits and see what officially ends up happening. So it's finishing. The screen is now fading to black. And the credits say that the only person that technically died was Rochelle. And if we rewind the footage back again, you guys can see that Rochelle does die right before we end up jumping into the out of bounds area. So that makes sense. Relative to Coach though, he was at like 3 HP. And unless he received medical attention immediately, he was going to die. He should have therefore died off camera. But he didn't, and this means the myth is busted. And the reason why that this happened is because, at least on PC, ever since the last stand update, they changed the way that the incapacitation system on the finales work, where if you are in the rescue vehicle and you're incapped, you're actually still considered as alive, whereas beforehand you would not be. So for people that play on the Xbox and didn't get the last stand update, this may be why some of you guys were asking this question, because technically speaking, this myth is confirmed on Xbox, but busted on the current version on PC. So you can look at this a variety of different ways, but since I always do my myths relative to the PC copy of the game, I'm going to label this myth as busted. Myth. Can a hunter traverse hard rain by only touching water? Alrighty guys, the second myth is submitted in by Taco Twins Gaming. Now I also gotta clarify is that it's a given that we're going to have to exclude chapters 1 and 2 because those chapters do not have significant enough rain, so we're only going to be doing this from chapter 3 onward. Now even though it's only chapter 3, chapter 3 has quite a lot of rain, and so this challenge could be easy, Unfortunately, though, we immediately have a problem when we're trying to end up getting past this first giant obstacle right here, which is where the elevator panic event was from the last chapter. And it looks like that the only way that you can get to the next batch of water is to end up climbing the building. We did try to see if whether or not that there was another way around the building by just going in reverse order. But there's unfortunately invisible barriers in the way, and the only way you can go through the building is to touch and land on the building, which means Myth 2 is automatically busted even as of the first chapter with rain in it, because unless you want to make the exception where you can climb the side of the building at the beginning, which I don't want to necessarily have that exception because I feel like that's cheating, you're not going to be able to get to the next batch of rain. Myth. 
can you headshot a special infected with incendiary ammo equipped? I do apologize if I butcher your name, but I believe it is Lure. From a quick Google search, I do believe that this might be French, but correct me if I'm wrong, please, because I want to make sure I get it right. For the time being, we're going to go with Lure. So, Lure, for your myth, what we want to end up doing is we're going to end up taking a hunting rifle and shooting a special infected in the head to get a control, and then we're going to use incendiary ammo and do the exact same thing. Although, I do just have one quick question because I'm not exactly sure how to interpret your myth because I want to think of two different ways to interpret it. So number one, I'm assuming you're asking, does the incendiary ammo end up making it where you can or cannot get a headshot multiplier? Or number two, I'm thinking that you're asking if whether or not that you end up having it where you can even get a headshot at all with incendiary ammo equipped in, like the bullet scatter is different from the ammo type. With that in mind, from what we ended up finding from our experience, we really weren't able to notice anything of significance. So when I ended up shooting the charger in the head, it ended up taking like two bullets with a hunting rifle. My gut is leaning more towards confirmed for this myth, although I'm just not entirely sure. Because I really would like you to specify what you exactly meant when you submitted the myth, because I feel like that would help. Because from what we understand and what we ended up seeing, it looks like that the initial bullet impact besides the burning damage from the incendiary rounds kicking in, seems the exact same, and that allows for you to get a headshot with both types of ammo. So, I think that the myth is confirmed, but let me know what you think. Myth. Are players' walking speeds different depending on how deep they are in water? Alrighty guys, myth number four is submitted in by Glopersko. So we are in the finale of Death Toll, and we're gonna have happen is that I'm going to go into third person so you guys can see how deep in the water I am, and then I'm going to go from point A to point B. In other words, just a straight line. So currently, right now, I'm at waist deep in water, and this is my current speed right now on the speedometer, so this is our control. And now I'm at the deepest body of water possible in Death Toll without crouching, and when you guys look at the speedometer now, I am just ever so slightly slower in the water. So even though it's subtle, yes, the myth is confirmed. You are slower in deeper bodies of water, just like you would be in real life. Alrighty guys, and now it is time to test out the final myth. And once again, it is going to be, if we are healing with a medkit during the animation, are we able to shrink or change our hitboxes so that way we can make it where we can dodge bullets if somebody were to shoot at us? Let's see if we can dodge bullets like Neo in the Matrix. Myth. If you heal with a med kit during the animation when you duck down, can you dodge bullets? Alrighty guys, the last myth of today's episode is submitted in by Dan himself. Alright, so we're going to be doing this myth where Dan is going to be shooting at me and I'm going to be trying to dodge first and then I'm going to shoot at him. And we're going to also do this with the Left 4 Dead 1 survivors because they have their own unique healing animation which is different than the Left 4 Dead 2 crew because this animation that they do makes it where they end up crouching or ducking slightly to reach and heal their one leg. Alright, so I'm healing myself now and any second now I'm going to duck and when Dan's shooting at me, it doesn't damage me until I stand back up. Alright, so now Dan's going to heal himself. I've got my pistols lined up with his head and when he ducks and I shoot at him, it only ends up damaging him when he also stands back up. So this does mean that yes, the hitbox does change when you end up crouching down to get your one character's leg, meaning the myth is confirmed. The Left 4 Dead 1 crew specifically, due to the way that their animation is done, if they ended up getting very lucky with the timing, they could be able to dodge bullets that come their way. Alrighty guys, but that's going to be here for today's video, and I do truly hope you guys ended up enjoying it. If you did, please consider dropping a like, comment, subscribe, follow, and all that beautiful stuff. And if you guys have a myth of your very own that you guys would like to have us test in next week's episode, please, by all means, leave it here in the comments down below. Or also, alternatively, you can leave it within my Discord server, which is going to be linked down below in this video's description. As we wrap up the video, guys, by the way, I just want to mention a couple quick things. Number one, I have a second YouTube channel now. It is called Black Ninja 797 Extras. And on this channel, I'll be uploading slash posting additional content that you would normally not see on this main channel. Videos on this channel can range anywhere between funny moments with my friends, walkthroughs of games that I wanted to play, 
or the return of challenge accepted which is a series i used to do here on my main channel where i would play games that you guys requested me to play so if you guys want to check out my second channel it will be linked down below in this video's description and also as well thank you and shout outs to epic games for being my first ever sponsor i have a supporter creator code with them the code is just my name black ninja 797 if you guys want to you can use it in the fortnite and epic games item shops Anybody that uses my code or has used it before in the past, I tremendously appreciate you. And with all that being said, guys, I hope you end up enjoying seeing another YouTube video from the most sneak YouTubers are ever going to see. Thanks for watching, guys. I love all of you, and peace out. Hey, meme lords. Jesus here. And you better have enjoyed that video there by the eternal god Daddy Ninja. You should probably subscribe, too. Or the mighty Moab will come for your balls. If you enjoyed the video, you might like it too. And give me the memes. Flash, bang, boom.